Mr. Balabud. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, and thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. I'm the founder of public.resource.org, a nonprofit that puts government databases that everybody agrees are public on the internet and then works closely with government to help them improve their own operations. I'm responsible for placing the SEC Edgar and U.S. patent databases on the internet for the first time. Public Resource has put all the historical opinions of the U.S. Court of Appeals on the internet for the first time. We worked with Speaker Boehner and Chairman Issa to put a full archive of video from the House Oversight Committee and 14,000 hours of additional hearings online. I would like to highlight three key points. First, there's a fundamental principle of our democracy, the rule of law, that states that if we are to be an empire of laws and not of men, we must publish the edicts of government for all to know. Because ignorance of the law is no excuse and an informed citizenry must educate itself on its rights and obligations. That the law has no copyright because it is owned by the people is a principle that has been repeatedly reaffirmed by the courts. Despite that principle, my nonprofit has received stern takedown notices for publishing the official codes of Georgia, Idaho, and Mississippi. At the federal level, the Code of Federal Regulations deliberately and explicitly incorporates by reference public safety codes that become binding law. As Joe Baccia, the president of the American National Standards Institute, clearly states, a standard that has been incorporated by reference has the force of law and it should be available. My nonprofit has assembled a collection of a thousand of those public safety laws and we have made them available to the public for the first time on the internet. For that service, three standards bodies are suing us for, and I quote, massive copyright infringement. They are suing us for publishing the law without a license. My second point is about money. Some standards bodies insist that before one can read or speak the law, one must first obtain their permission. They say everybody needs a license because they need the money. But the goal of their process is precisely that their safety codes become the law. They lobby aggressively for that outcome and they boast loudly when their codes are adopted. When a safety code becomes law, the publisher gets a gold seal of approval of the American people. They exploit that position by selling all sorts of ancillary services such as membership, training, and certification. The business has become incredibly lucrative and these nonprofit standards bodies pay their CEOs million dollar salaries. My third point is that the right to read the law and speak the law is necessary for innovation. Innovation that leads to better tools for those that use the law every day, including government workers, electricians and plumbers, students and apprentices, volunteer firefighters, journalists, and citizens. Mr. Chairman, I have here for the committee's inspection 20 public safety standards that are part of federal law including the safety requirements for wooden and metal ladders, the safety requirements for protective footwear, the national fuel and gas code. If you were to read these laws into your hearing record, would the Congress face strident objections for speaking the law without a license like my nonprofit faces? That is why 115 distinguished law professors have joined me in calling on this committee to consider an edicts of government amendment to the Copyright Act to clarify once and for all that the law belongs to the people. Thank you very much.